very few of us can claim to have made the world a lovelier, more magical place. Randall Sidley, acclaimed and celebrated landscape designer, is one of the few that can. For over 40 years, Randall has been transforming the commonplace into the most wonderful of dreamscapes. From the humblest of city gardens to the finest of country estates, it is late summer and Randall is completing his latest masterwork, the landscaping of 27 acres of riverside gardens on the banks of the River Thames. It's remarkable what we've achieved here in such a short space of time. This particular individual has lived here for 50 years and it was a very bold move of hers to, to do everything that we've done. And to her, the property is, is more of her, her past life and her connection to that past. She wakes up every morning and comes out, and her joy is to see it all again. You know, be it what she saw yesterday, be it it's changing through the seasons. There's constant joy of, I mean, I keep on coming here and I'm thinking, well, it keeps on giving. What keeps me going is the fact that I still love creating gardens and doing it for wonderful people. I'm here to sort of create my tapestry, my paintings. You know, I'm painting that canvas, I'm creating that canvas. What I'm saying, it's my passion. It's my F, it's my sweat and toil and all that that's gone into it. And that's what makes everything so much more special. My father was a very famous interior designer. Um, at that moment in the early 80s, um, late 70s, early 80s, being that I you know, breathed and lived in this amazing world of interior designing, we had a beautiful house, obviously. I knew about you know, society and how affluent and you know, how the world of interior designing was hugely successful and my father the likes of David Hicks which was a close member close friend of our family you know I could see it all happening on there in front of me so I went to work for my father and he had two projects and he was already talking to somebody about designing the gardens and I said why don't you let me get involved my uh, inspiration came from seeing Repton's red books and I then automatically saw how he did his drawings. Where, you know, you had, here it is, and then you turn over the, the, the flap, and then here is what it's going to look like. And I automatically thought, ah, right. It clicked. You know, it's one of those boom moments, light bulb moments, or whatever you want to call it. But the thing is, I have done so much. I did some amazing projects in Syria, in Aleppo, in Damascus. Amazing place to, to work in. The craftsmen, the people there were just unbelievable and sad that the demise of it all. I've seen most incredible things in Beirut, in the reconstruction. We were doing the Phoenicia Hotel there. And, you know, it was a completely bombed out place and everybody thought I was completely mad going there. And then other sort of countries, you know, worked in Italy, I've worked extensively throughout Europe. I've worked in um, Addis Ababa, um, incredible country. It was, uh, that was quite a long time ago. But it's a major challenge, major challenge. I've done it, whether it's in this country or challenges that I've met, achieved great things in doing gardens in Hong Kong, and everybody says that Hong Kong doesn't have big gardens. But then there's a place called Discovery Bay where they have quite a nice bits of parcels of land, and there we had one where we did six townhouses. The small, smallest was, um, plot size was 8,000 square meters, up to um, up to 10,000. So you know, huge. I sometimes say to people, you know, I'm, I'm still learning to get it right, um, but in, you know, the more confidence and knowledge you have, greater your abilities and comfort zones are. Mine is the vision, mine is very much, I have this big vision, I can automatically understand spaces, you know, I'm effectively consider myself the sort of the, the conductor, I then surround myself with a team of people. The best advice I can give anybody, you know, 
play your own strengths and then surround yourself with very capable people. This project here, you know, it has gone very fast. I mean, being done a massive amount in the space of one year. I am not a person that can sit in an office for five days a week. So I spend the Tuesdays, Thursdays out of the office, enjoying myself, working with my team. They know that I'm not asking them to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. Um, so from planting plants to sweeping up and doing everything, you know, I'm there in the thick of it. As I say to clients, I say, that um, I said, by the way, this is going to be a long time relationship. And they look at me and say, yes, Randall, it's something we don't know about. I said, I said, what you've got to understand is you bring your interior designers, they decorate, they put everything in the house, hand it over to you, the keys, and say, voila. Where the garden, it's just the beginning. Um, as I say, you know, we've got to look after all this the planting that we've done, creating the, the structure of the landscape, because it doesn't just sort of it put itself to bed. You have to put it to bed. You have to do all the cutting back, all the preparation. You know, I mean, what we've created here, I mean, you know, it all looks amazing. It'll be in a space of six months or less than six months, what we've created. But, you know, it won't be next year, it'll be the year after where suddenly our work will be cut out because everything is going to have matured. We're going to have to be splitting everything because if we don't split everything, then the garden will become dominant of certain species of plants. So it's a question of getting balance of nature. Whereas the, the little creatures of this world, as opposed to the big creatures of this world, don't dominate. The big ones don't suffocate the little ones. And my client in Canada, when he said, you know, I could buy, go out and buy a Monet, I could go and buy lots of things. But, you know, ultimately, the garden is what my wife gives her huge pleasure. And when she looks out the window and she sees her Monet, then, you know, that to her brings us all the joy, joy in the world. And I think they were somewhat elderly in their years. And I always remember seeing them sitting on their bench, looking out on this beautiful garden we created for them, with a smile from beaming across their faces. And they looked so happy in that space. And I, I looked at them and I said, Paul, Jackie, you know, just seeing you smile. And he said, but Randall, why would I not smile?